What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to retrofit a set of puddle lights in your Mercedes-Benz W204. Specifically, the lower case of your side mirror assembly because that is where the puddle light is going to be fitted. Now, originally I was going to do a single long video for this retrofit, but due to not having the parts on hand, the video being so long, and the requests I've had in order to release this video, to help you guys start this project, and then hopefully when I receive the part, I can release part two, and you guys can then follow along and finish off this project. I've decided to break this up into two parts. However, I will say that this video, part one of this retrofit, is most likely going to contain all the information you're going to need. Part two will contain some critical information, but not as much as part one. Part one is basically going to show you everything you need to know, and it's just a matter of putting it all together and uh, wiring it together. Or basically just a visual confirmation and also visually showing you how everything works. So let's jump straight into the video. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what puddle lights are, they are a set of lights which shine onto the ground next to the car underneath your side mirror assembly. On the newer models 2012 onwards, most of them have this puddle light. Now I've always been jealous of that so I decided to do this retrofit myself. However, with doing this retrofit, I wanted to make sure that when I unlocked and locked the car that the puddle light also faded in and out with that locking feature. Originally, I wanted to use the front dome light as my power source, but in the end, I decided against it due to the amount of room I had and not being able to find the wires I wanted according to the schematics of the car. And I decided to use my rear dome light as a power source instead, and I was able to still get the results that I wanted. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need, the tools you need, the materials, also where to get power from, how to route the cable, certain parts of the car that you need to remove in order to get the cable where it needs to go, and most importantly, how to wire it all up. So just to give you a brief idea of what this video entails, basically, I have used the rear dome light as a power source, and I have routed the cable from the rear dome light down the B pillar, all the way down the side and I've run it along the lower part of the car along the side and then come to the side door panel where the control module is and then from there I have removed bits and pieces in order to get the cable from the side door panel all the way through to this lower part right here so that I could wire it to the puddle lights I know it sounds a lot harder than it seems, but honestly, to tell you the truth, this was quite an easy retrofit. This is definitely something worth doing if you want a set of puddle lights for your W204 and you do not have a set from factory. So for those of you who already have the puddle lights and you're interested in either changing the bulb or the light housing, then this video is also going to show you how to do that. Just fast forward a little bit till you get to that part of the video and I'll show you exactly how to disassemble your side mirror assembly so that you can replace those certain parts. I just wanted to point out some of the parts I had to buy in order to make this retrofit look as factory as possible. Some of the parts I had to buy was this lower case here and also a set of puddle lights. I do strongly recommend to buy a lower case with the puddle light already cut out but in my case, I didn't do that. Instead, I bought a lower case which had the outline of the puddle light and I had to cut it out myself. But if I had to do this again, I would strongly recommend to just buy the lower case with the puddle light already cut out. That way you don't have to mess around with Dremel tools and a cutting tool to cut out the outline as perfect as possible, which I had to do but I have the tools to do the job, so I wasn't too fussed. Another reason why I had to buy this lower case for this side mirror assembly, if you don't have puddle lights factory fitted, then you don't have the clip which the puddle light clips into. 
and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. As you can see here on the screen, the puddle light has this little clip that I've circled and that clip is important because the puddle light clips into that part so that it doesn't move around when you drive. If you didn't have this clip, you would need some sort of adhesive product that would allow it to stick and stay. That's the problem. If you used an adhesive product like that, it would be a pain in the ass if ever your puddle light blew out and you had to change it. You then have the possibility of slowly ruining your lower case. This is something that you should definitely take into account if you decide to do this retrofit. As for the tools you're going to need, all I used in order to get this retrofit done was a trim removal tool, a set of Torx bits or Torx screwdrivers, T10, T25 and T27. In my case, I also used a power tool just to make things easier. And you're also going to need a set of cables, black and red, so that you can route it from your side mirror all the way to your rear dome light. Now, when it comes to using wires, cables for your LED lights, you only really need something that can handle up to about 1.7 to 2, 2.5 amps. Now, personally, I just used whatever I had lying around and I believe that they are 18 or 20 AWG. But I know for a fact that you can use either 24 and even 26 AWG and it will definitely do the job. So anything below that, like 22, uh, 20 and 18, is just going to be kind of like overkill. But at the same time, the reason why I still used my 20 AWG wire was so that it was also very easy to bend it and route it as I um, had to go around bends and stuff. You can use a coat hanger or a electrician's yellow tongue in order to help you get the cable to where it needs to go. A soldering iron, in my case I used a gas portable soldering iron and that did the job. You're also going to need some zip ties, cable cutters, wire cutters and wire strippers as well. You can use butt connectors, crimp connectors. Like I always say, if you ever have to cut any factory cables for any reason, then I do strongly recommend that you cut and solder rather than using butt connectors as it isn't a long lasting secure connection. Now just to show you guys how you get this cable all the way through from here, getting to the side mirror is a different story, but I'm gonna show you. There is a gap in here. You will see it where this wire goes through. You see where these wires go through? That's what you're gonna follow. It is a molded plastic piece. All you have to do is continuously push it through and eventually it will come out through here. As you can see the red wire there. And then you have to pull this off, okay? It just simply has two tabs, okay? As you can see there. There is a tab there and there's a tab on the bottom. It's very easy to pry off. And then you just continue to feed it through and then push it through here. Once you push it through here, it will drop down here. Now you see this piece here? All I did was lift it up and then I pushed my wire through till it came out. Now you can see that red cable right there. That is the cable. It's a very sticky piece. I've just let it come through and I've dropped it in. I've tucked it all along here. In there, as you can see the red cable's in there. And I continue to tuck it through. As you can see, it just keeps following through. If you're not sure how to remove all of this, it's pr it's pretty simple. Check out my video on how to install a aftermarket subby in your W204 and in that video I show you how to remove all of this. And from here, I didn't even remove this piece. All I did was I tucked my wire under here and then I kept tucking it under until I got through to the other side. And then from there, I took it on this side here and I tucked it under and then eventually it went through here. Now from here, I just ran the cable under here and it will come out through here. There it is there. I just tucked it under, I followed it up, as you can see there. Then I just continued to follow it up. And then from here, I tucked it underneath here. It just came up through here and I pulled this out. And as you can see, that's where it came out. Now, in order to get it to your the roof panel, I used a yellow tongue like this, like electricians use. And I pushed it through until it came out the other side. And then I simply duct taped it to this yellow tongue and I pulled it through all the way and then it came through. In order to get the cable 
to my rear dome light all I did was I ran a zip tie and I pushed it through the gap there and it came out through there then I simply tied that wire to the zip tie and pulled it through and I ended up with this result right here as you can see there see that's what I did it came straight through now I have both cables fed to where I want it now it's just a matter of putting them together and then to the power and I am done okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to remove this rear dome light get a trim removal tool you've got a little gap here but you can just simply go from the side here and what you do is you get in here get your trim removal tool in and then just pry down and then it comes down and then turn it look at that if you look inside here you can see there's one two three four four clips where these sit in okay one two and there's two more on the other side three and four and that's simply how you pry that off okay now in order to tap into these wires as you can see here this is exactly what I have done I've used t-taps I've tapped negative into the brown cable and positive into the black cable with the purple stripe you can see that there the black cable with the purple stripe so as you saw before I just used extra long cables I'm probably going to shorten these later on but for now I'm just going to leave them like this these are my cables you saw that it came down the positive and negative comes from the left side and then the positive and negative comes from the right side what I've done is I've put the two positives together and the two negatives together and then I simply tapped into these wires now here I have soldered them together so that they don't ever come loose but after soldering them together I connected it to one thin cable and then I simply just tapped into the wires and uh, yeah that works just fine as you can see here I left a whole bunch of cables you can cut them shorter if you choose to all I do is I tuck them up here and then I just push this back in in part two I will show you exactly how I soldered these wires together and that's it guys now I'm going to show you how to get from this area here to your side mirror this is how we run the cable to the side mirror first thing we have to do is take off this cover and just imagine that this hasn't been run through yet but for the sake of this video I'm going to show you guys how to get this wire through to your side mirror using a zip tie the first thing you want to do here is you want to pry off the speaker cover in order to pry this speaker off you get this trim removal tool in there and then you you pry the speaker out this way and then you'll see that it comes off once you have this part loose you push it forwards that way like this and then it comes off and then you remove your sound deadening foam and as you can see already you can see that the speaker cable has already been run through to my side mirror all you have to do now is push your cable up like this the zip tie then comes out to here before we remove the bolts inside we need to loosen this side mirror so that we are able to access inside and have leverage while the bolts are in in order to pull the case off be sure you do this step first then remove the bolts in order to remove your side mirror cover bend the mirror out there are two ways to remove this mirror glass one way is by pressing it back and then with a bit of brute force you just pull it straight out but I prefer not to do that line the mirror up so that it is flush with the inside line of this side housing and then from the bottom what you do is you pull forwards and up okay and you'll see it begin to unclip okay there we go that's one clip out while you're pulling out begin to lift up so you pull out and then lift up it should come out grab your trim removal tool you can bend it back there's going to be a clip back here as well okay so you can actually begin to pry this part here from the side with a trim removal tool and it will slowly come up as you can see and then you can just 
unclip it all in one go. So basically, what I did was I pried it up from here so that this clip right here would come off. Now I'm going to show you how it all clips in together. Okay, you see these clips here? You'll see it. Okay, you got a clip here which clips into here, and then you also have a clip here, and that sits inside here. And then you obviously have your LED plug which plugs directly into there and that comes off in one whole piece just like that. Now we can remove the three bolts. In order to run this cable through to your side mirror you need to remove these three T25 Torx bolts. Okay, that's three removed. With the three bolts removed, what you wanna do now is lift from the bottom up and then pull it down underneath this rubber gasket here. So you pull up first and then you pull down. As you can see, there's a lip here, so you need to get that lip free. So you just pull it down like so. And there you have it. That's how you loosen your side mirror. Now just be very careful not to scratch your chrome piece or whatever you have here on the window ledge. This is how you're going to run your wire near your tweeter out to here. Okay, so we left off with running the cable up here and then leaving it at this point here. In order to get the cable through, we have to push it through here and then you will see it come out the other side. When we push the zip tie through, it comes through that little slot there and then it comes out here. In order to get it to this point here, there is kind of like a foam piece here, which then you can just pull straight off. You can pull it straight off like so. You got to make sure that your zip tie or your wiring comes through that little gap there like so. Okay. And then from here, we'll just pull it straight through now, as this is just an, an example. From here, you see how the cable is routed right now. You see how it goes straight across here, tucked underneath that little clip there, and then it follows the side mirror wiring. So you simply just follow it along, and then it just runs underneath. It runs underneath, and then tucks into this here. And then, you simply use your zip tie again and push it in. You're going to see that the zip tie will then come out through here. As you can see, you then pull it through and keep following the cable from here down and underneath your mirror housing and you're pretty much there. And that's how you get your cable from inside your door panel to your side mirror. Now, I wanna show you how you should properly remove your side mirrors. If you look carefully at your side mirrors, you have two clips here which controls the heating function so that your side mirrors don't fog up. And then you have these clips here. Now, I have seen many people simply just pull it off like this with brute strength. Now, I'm gonna show you that you can do it, but I don't recommend to do it that way if you can help it. I'm just going to pull straight back from inside the mirror. I'm going to pull straight out and it will come straight off. If you look at the side mirror here, it simply just has these clips here. There's four, there's eight altogether. Two, four, six, eight. And they simply clip onto this point right here of the um, mirror motor. And then to reinstall it, you simply just push it straight back on and it clips straight back on. However, I really don't recommend to remove it that way if you can help it because I truly believe that eventually these clips are going to get brittle and you're going to break them. What you want to do is use a pry tool like this or even just a flathead screwdriver. Now the problem with doing it this way is you have to remove the housing first, but that's what you're going to have to do regardless anyway. Now, if you're just replacing the mirror and you don't have to remove the side uh, mirror covers, then by all means, you can pull straight out. But 
I truly still believe that there is a chance that you're going to break either the clips or the, the mirror itself. What I recommend to do is remove the side covers first, side mirror covers, and then with a flathead screwdriver or a trim removal tool, simply pry, pull forward and then pry on the clips like so, okay? As you can see, I'm freeing up the clips right now. One, two, three, four. Now that I've released four, the top half comes off and then the bottom half will now just come off. There we go. And as you can see, it just comes off just e as easily. And with these two wires here, I don't think it matters how you put the wires back. It is simply just so that it activates your heated mirrors. I'm going to remove the side mirror now just to show you how you run the wire. So as you can see here, that's how the cable then gets to behind your mirror motor so that you can now retrofit your own puddle lights. This is what I'm installing right here, these puddle lights. Okay, they're going to sit in like so. And then I'm going to connect this wire to a T10 female bulb housing so that this male can plug straight into it. If you already have puddle lights on your W204, right now I'm going to show you how to access your puddle light so that you can change the bulb to an LED one and give it a much brighter look. Okay, so first thing you want to do here is you need to remove two T10 Torx bolts. That's one, okay. There we go, there we go, get it out. Okay, that's two T10 Torx uh, screws removed. You're going to see a clip like this at the front. This clip you push towards you and then down. And then there's one at the back, which you then do the same. You push it down and then it will release. Then what you have now is a clip here. So you need to get a flathead screwdriver and get this unclipped. So what I like to do is just put it in, get a trim removal tool, pry it off like so, and then it comes straight down. That's how you remove your lower, your lower case for your side mirrors so that you can replace the bulb that plugs into your factory puddle light if you have it. As you can see in this case, I don't have a puddle light, hence why I'm doing this install so that I can retrofit my own puddle lights. Okay guys, so now I'm just going to strip the cables and uh, solder them together. Now, personally, it's totally up to you what you decide to use here. You could always just use butt connectors, but personally, if you want a permanent connection, soldering is going to be the key. I've stripped back both wires now, and now I'm just going to twist them together and then solder them. Okay, so black to black, just twist them like this. Okay, red to red, black to black, just twist, twist, twist. Okay, we go black to black. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is just twist them together. Okay, that's the black one twisted together. Okay guys, don't, don't forget to have your heat shrink already on here. Okay, so that's the uh, black one twisted together. Now to twist together the uh, red one. Okay, now that we twisted them together, now I'm going to put some of this onto the wires. It's just soldering flux place. So I'm going to put it onto the wires now. A little bit on my fingers. And I'll just spread it around the wire. Right. This just helps the um, solder ring to uh, get around the wires faster. That way you're not trying to hold it there for so long, melting your wires. And this stuff's excellent for, especially for begin solderers. Now we just get our soldering iron. Now, you know, mind you, I'm still just a beginner, but I'm going to show you guys how I do it. There really isn't much to it. Practice just makes perfect. So just keep practicing and eventually you'll be able to do it. Okay, I'm no professional, but I definitely do try my best. Okay, there you go. Now we have a good bond. There we go. Okay. There we 
girl and get it all the way around. There we go, perfect. Beautiful. Okay, just get it all around the wire, you know, just like that. And there we go. Nicely soldered. Completely okay, get all the wire. There we go. And it's done. Now look, let's look at their soldering. I'm still in the um, learning fa phases of my soldering, so uh, give me a break here, guys. But yeah, that's what you want. You want solder all the way around the cable. That, that's really all there is to it. I'm going to cover it with some heat shrink. Heat it up, it will shrink. Okay, here we go, heating it up. Both sides, get a good bond all the way around. Beautiful, that's it. That's definitely 100% secured, and uh, now it's just time to test it. There we go, guys. Puddle lights working. I'm just testing the light now. I'm going to show you when the door open and closes that this puddle light will work. Close the doors now, and now you'll see the light fade. Now, there you go, guys. Open the door once again. There we go. Puddle light turns on, and close the door, and the puddle light will turn off. And it should be about me now. And just to show you guys, I'm going to unlock the car now. As you can see, the puddle light turns on when you unlock the car, and then when you lock the car, the puddle lights stay on and then turn right off. So that is perfect, guys. I love it. All we have to do is install everything, remove the lower case, install it, push the um, puddle light in, and uh, Put everything back together and we're good to go and that brings us to the end of part one guys so i really hope you found this video helpful and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video be sure to stay tuned for part two and in part two i will show you guys how to finish off this project so be sure to subscribe so you're notified when i release that video and as always if you have any questions comment below and uh, i will be happy to get back to you as soon as possible thank you very much for watching until next time guys